Ah, uh, yeah, folks, it is Monday, once again, March 4, 2019. Yeah, it's time for another episode of the Grim Leftovers program. I am your host, Grimner, and we are live right now, right here on RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz. So uh, welcome everybody here to the program that's tuned in out there, and if you're not tuned in right now, Maybe you're hearing it on a replay sometime in the future. Welcome to the future. (laughs) Anyway, uh, glad to have you all here with us tonight. Whoever all may be tuned in. Uh, We we go out on all kinds of various places here on uh, the uh, RLM radio. Yeah, we're on Spreaker for one. That is uh, one of our sites that we're on. We are on freedomsnetwork.com, realliberty.org. We're on Internet Radio. We're on TuneIn.com. We're on RLMRadio.xyz. I think I mentioned that one at least once. (laughs) And, of course, we're here at our home site, RealLibertyMedia.com. Yes, indeed. And uh, you can find the show page there. Just tune in on the the player on the side or hit the little pop-up player link. It, it, It all works, man. It all works. So, uh, uh, again, welcome, and I want to say hi and howdy to all the folks over here in the Real Liberty Media chat on irc.freenode.net. That's where our our normal IRC channel is, or uh, chat room if you prefer. But, uh, yeah, we got a bunch of great folks here. We always got great folks hanging around here. We we got the barman bot. We got Cowboy Tech and myself and the Mighty Moose Girl. We got Miss Kate and uh, Don Carroll, D.C., as a mo and Chelsea Donny, Miss Graham Z. We got we got Jay Dread. Jay Dread still hanging around with us? Figured he'd be off to Starbucks by now. We got Mr. Meisterbrow, who's not been feeling so well, so get better there, buddy. We got the Ponder Gander himself. Yeah, Ponder Gander from Friday afternoon's show. Uh <laughs> Ponder Gander. <laughs> we got Rain and we got we got Rob Works and and, and Rome's Trust No One, whatever you want to call him. Uh, our, our bot that used to be called RLM Fluke is now called Vanna White. There's a story behind that. But if you're not in the chat, it doesn't really matter to you. Of course, none of these people matter to you if you're not in the chat. So come on over. Jump into the chat. You can talk to all these fine folks that are here. Mr. Vinny himself. It's so easy to talk to him. We got the Phantom and, and we got Beetle and Circulo. We got the Cyborg and Noodle in Dakota and Frumpy and Gooberzilla. We got Java Doctor and JJ's from Scotland, Kozu and Kiss from, uh, I'd say down under, but I I don't really know where where that would line up at uh, on my chat list if I actually joined the channel that I I found them from. Uh, We got Nensen Dubois in Pone Sauce, Mr. Sock Puppet, Uh, this tech man, I don't don't believe I've seen him talk here, and of course the uh, Uno, Uno Bot, so uh, yeah. All right, so I got a bunch of stories lined up, as I usually do. If you're not familiar with the Grim Leftovers program, what it is is the stuff that I either decided not to get to or just plain didn't have time to get to that I had earmarked, earmarked, bookmarked, whatever you want. It's not really necessarily either one of those, but uh, I marked them to be read on, on the Freakers Ball Show which is uh, 11 p.m. Eastern every Friday night with myself and the Mighty Moose Girl. And uh, we, we, we play music on there. We talk about different stories. Some of them are links. Some of them are not. We just talk about random who knows whatever. Uh, you get your moosey rants. You get all kinds of fun stuff on the Freakers Ball. But that's Friday night. That's 11 p.m. Eastern. This is Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And, uh, yeah, so I, I, I try and... You know, I, I went through, I go out throughout the week and I, and I mark stories that I, that I want to, you know, that I think may be interesting to share with other people. And uh, so I get to some, I, I don't get to all, but here it is for, for some of you all, some of you all, all of you some. Um, by the way, if you're, if you're listening in another country, hola. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're going to start off here with, 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 with a, uh, with a, uh, 
with, with, with a story from uh, the courthouse news service. Um, this was on January 31st. This, they put this up there. and uh, Yeah, the headline, I have to agree with the headline. The, the privacy advocates argue that one link click does not justify search. Meaning, if you're browsing through the interwebs and you see something interesting or possibly titillating, uh, and you click on that link, should, if that link takes you somewhere maybe you didn't want to go or maybe you actually did want to go, either way, you clicked on a single link somewhere and it took you to something that the overlords that believe they, they, are, they, they are in charge of everything um, determine that you should not be seeing, whatever that may be. In this particular case, it was a man clicked a link and it took him to a child porn site. He clicked the link and it took him to a child porn site. And so, here's the story. Richmond, Virginia, Courthouse News. An internet privacy group went before the Fourth Circuit on Thursday trying to convince the three-judge panel that the government overstepped its authority by searching a man's house for child pornography based on a single internet link he clicked. Uh, a single click on a URL should not be enough for probable cause, Electronic Frontier Foundation staff attorney Stephanie Lacombra told the Richmond, Virginia-based appeals court the search of Nikolai Boyska's... Oh, he sounds Russian, so he's probably guilty, right? Isn't that the way it works? If you're Russian, you're guilty? Uh, anyway, he, he might be another one of the Eastern Bloc countries over there. I don't know. Uh, Nikolai Boyska, <laughs> Boyska, a Virginia resident, happened in December 2017, and he was charged with receipt of child pornography and possession, possession of child pornography. Now, if you receive something, you're probably in possession of it, right? So why, why, is, why, is, the, why is that a separate thing? Anyway, uh, he was sentenced last May to five years in prison because he clicked a link on the internet. Yeah. The arrest was part of a larger federal investigation of a Tor network website called Bulletin Board A, uh, uh, which is, according to them, a known resource for child pornography. Now, riddle me this, Batman. If this is a known resource for child pornography, why don't they just shut it down? They know it's there. They know who's running the thing. Well, what are they going after? Some guy clicking a link somewhere out there in, in the wild instead of just going after this website. Well, what, what is going on with that? Anyway, the nature of the Tor network makes tracking users nearly impossible. But the link that led to Boisk's arrest was hosted on a file-sharing website located outside of the dark web, giving the feds unique access to users via their IP address. <laughs> so he, not only did he click on a link he shouldn't have, he was also kind of dumb. According to federal prosecutors, the internet user at this guy's address, accessed the link to child porn on the same day it was posted. Then he unlocked the download link using information from the same board, according to the Justice Department attorneys. Uh, Boisk filed a motion to suppress the search warrant, but failed to sway the U.S. District Judge, somebody I can't pronounce, in the Eastern District of Virginia. The search warrant application connect to Boisk's home was based only, solely, on a URL click. The link went to the download site, which was password protected. Assistant U.S. Attorney Nathaniel Smith III argued in court on Thursday. Uh, the link and the password came from the child porn website. Smith found a sympathetic ear in the U.S. Circuit Judge Julius N. Richardson, a Donald Trump appointee, 
evil. He's a Donald Trump appointee. He's evil. Oh, wait, who seemed more willing to accept the context of the URL would be enough to authorize the search warrant if Boisk tried to suppress. And he says, If cocaine is shipped to a house, a dog smells it, and it's probable cause, Richardson said, comparing the idea of someone maliciously sending a link to a drug distribution network. Even if the drug dealer sends it to a neighbor, they might not know it's coming, but that still gives the jackboots probable cause. But the U.S. Circuit <laughs> uh, J Judge James A. Wynn, a Barack Obama appointee, so he's A-OK, -okay, who is known to ask extensive questions on cases he deems important, uh, said there were differences between sending someone drugs through the mail and sending someone a link on the interwebs. Uh, you think? <laughs> he said there were too many factors that could lead someone to a website, be it a pop-up ad or something else, and authorizing a search in this case could open the doors for unsuspecting people. I think this guy was fairly unsuspecting. Uh, to be subjected to a federal search. What we have here... Oh, a little different story. What we have here is a single click on a link, Wynn said, after referring back to the court documents and showing a click as the sole basis for the warrant. And while Wynn said he understood the context, the URL coming from a child porn network that leads to file containing child porn, he wondered if the FBI had determined if the same link had been posted anywhere else. He said the lack of evidence showing possible further dissemination of the link could break down the government's case as an unconstitutional burden of proof. This was a point LaCambra of the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, uh, tried to elevate in her closing arguments that the precedent that this could be set by allowing a search warrant based on a single click could easily be weaponized by trolls on the internet. If I'm a bad actor and I see this link on a bulletin board, uh, I and I share it in a different context, even if a user realizes what the link is, it's too late, she said. Anyone who accidentally or inadvertently clicks this link or get served the URL, could be a victim of a search warrant. But U.S. Attorney Smith emphasized the context in which the link was accessed and how Boisk used a password available on the child porn website to open up the file. He also noted history of child pornographers' use of the Tor network to hide their illegal activity. Uh... I tell you, man, they, 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 they want to argue and argue and argue about this because they want to be able to do that. They want to be able to go after everybody and anybody out there, regardless of where this link came from, because they're not arguing the fact that the guy just clicked the link and because and, he, whatever. They what, what they want to do is they want to be able to go after anybody that clicks a link they don't like. For example... I like to read stories on RT.com or Russia or, or some of the other Russian websites. And they hate the Russians. Well, they pretend to hate the Russians. And that's, that's part of the game. But we, we, we won't go there. Um, <laughs> so I click a, a, a link to a Russian story and suddenly I could be a, a traitor to the U.S. of A. Which I, I can't really be a traitor to something I, 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 I'm not a part of, but... That's not the way they see it, of course. So um, uh, just just uh, bear this in mind and, and uh, know that this guy, he was sentenced to five years in prison for clicking a freaking link. I don't know where he got the link. That's not in the story uh, exactly anyway. And I don't know why he decided to grab the password and open up whatever file it was that were both there available on this child porn website. And maybe he's just like a guy that likes to look at child porn, in which case he's a disgusting human. Uh, but the fact of the matter is 
they didn't have that information prior to going after him uh, for clicking the link. So if they would have known right up front that because that, that, that he had done these other things, then that could be a probable cause. But just clicking a link should not, is not, could not possibly be probable cause. Except to them. All right, all right. <laughs> Speaking of links and passwords and other such things, <laughs> I found this hilarious. That Just the headline itself, I, I nearly fell out of my chair laughing. Because that's what I do. Uh, from WGN9.com, no, WGNTV.com, WGN9 is the station, on uh, January, oh, February 6th, 2019. Not sure if your passwords are safe? Somebody's going to be able to help you. Who is it going to be? Who would you trust with your password information? Who do you think it could possibly be that could help you and protect your passwords and keep you safe? Oh, Google can help. <laughs> and they, they're saying this, and I, I'm assuming with a straight face, <laughs> because it's a huge headline on their website. Google is going to help you <laughs> help you protect your passwords. Oh my God! <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Here we go. There's a good chance hackers already know your favorite passwords. Now Google has a new free tool to let you know when your login information has been exposed. People who use Google Chrome can download the password checkup extension, which will monitor your website logins. Google has a plugin for you that will monitor your website Logins. When someone logs in with a username and password that Google knows has been compromised, it triggers a warning that prompts the user to change the password. Say what again? Yes, when you log in, Google is tracking your username and password for every website you access using this plugin within Chrome. For every website you access. And so they know, they will know, if you do do this, what is being recommended here to allow Google to have informa all that information. I'm thinking, nah, not, not, not today, guys. I mean, Google? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, it says Google cross-checks the login credentials against a regularly updated database of more than... 4 billion username and password entries uh, that it has collected from sources such as password dumps. Uh, hackers responsible for the data breaches on sites like Yahoo or LinkedIn or Google. Oh, you don't want to mention Google Plus here, do you? The site that actually had to shut down because it was so compromised. Anyway, uh, like Yahoo or LinkedIn, sometimes post large databases of people's usernames and passwords online. Because many people use the same passwords across sites, bad actors, you mean Google, uh, could try to use the information to gain access to their accounts. Yeah, the extension, which is only available on the Chrome browsers, which you should not trust the Chrome browsers to begin with, but there you go, uh, which is the extension only available on Google's Chrome browsers, was designed with uh, cryptography experts at Stanford University and Google. The user passwords and usernames will be encrypted, so Google says they won't actually be able to see them. Do you trust them with that? They designed it with cryptography experts. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Google can already automatically reset your password for Google Apps and sites uh, when, when it determines that they may have been exposed. 
The new feature won't be able to automatically reset passwords for non-Google services, but it sure wishes it could. But it is the only way to make those accounts... Oh, 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 it is one way to make those accounts more secure. Assuming you trust Google. <laughs> While the extension is new to Chrome, there are several other similar services available. Passwords, password managers like Dashlane and 1Password will monitor logins and inform people when their credentials have been compromised. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't give Google access to all your, your password information. That would be a mistake, a, a, a bad, bad mistake on your end, I do believe. Google can help. Yes, that's what it says. <laughs> All right, I had to have a sip of water there. From the Columbus Dispatch, no date on this article? February 6th. All right. And if this is what it says it is, why is it still called what it was? It doesn't really make any sense to me. All girl Boy Scout troop starts in Ohio. Wait, what? <laughs> All girl Boy Scout troop. I'm going to say right here, right now, in front of God and everybody, that's not a Boy Scout troop. <laughs> Uh, I, I may have shared this on the Freakers Ball and just didn't unmark it. I don't know. But it, it just, it, it just, I, I, what? I mean, 1984, they had the news speak, but this is beyond that, is it not? Oh, I'm being messaged that Google rules. <laughs> All right, here it is. Oh, anything boys can do, girls can do, too. And that includes being part of the Boy Scouts of America. A small but enthusiastic group of young women met at Zion Lutheran Church in Worcester on Monday evening to become part of the new Troop 64, an all-girl troop, which will offer the new recruits some privileges they think they've been missing such as whittling and camping. I first, I first read that as whining and complaining. I don't know, I don't know why. An all-girls Boy Scout troop. And I read that as whining and complaining. Huh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it will be the first all-girl BSA troop. Why, why, is it, what, 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 ah, why are they, what is going on here? <laughs> Under the umbrella of the Boy Scouts organization, female scout, scouts aged 10 to 18 will participate in Scouts BSA and because of their new designation, may work towards a distinguished rank of Eagle Scout, just like their male peers. Well, if they're in the Scouts, they should be able to become Eagle Scouts the same. I mean, whatever, whatever. Um, but that's not all. According to leaders Brooke Johnson of Kill Book, Kill Buck District, uh, and Colleen Cole, Scoutmaster. This troop will be led by the girls themselves, Cole said. For the most part, it will be girls leading other girls. Okay. And what's the big deal about that? It's completely run by them, she said. Fine. Big deal. Young girls, you know, if, if I was a boy, a, a young boy, uh, age of whatever it is, age it is, you get into the Boy Scouts. And I saw that there was an all-girl scout troop. <laughs> I'd say, I want to be in that troop there. <laughs> I, want, I want to hang out with them young gals. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, just to, you know, think of the odds. Anyway. <laughs> they might get, they might get their own, their own merit badge for, you know, Never mind. <laughs> anyway, I don't need to share the rest of this with you. I just find it absurd and bizarre. And 
uh, just don't call it Boy Scouts at this point. Uh, 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 is there, is 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 there is there, am, am I am I am I missing something here? <laughs> oh, now now I'm also being mentioned uh, messaged about a comment I made that I said in front of God and everyone, and being asked how. Does a professed anarchist believe in a god? Well, you're 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 mixing things up. Anarchy has nothing to do with theology. <laughs> your 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 political beliefs and your theology can be should be totally separate designations. But uh, I'm not going to go off and, and discuss that in the middle of the show here. I'm just going to tell you that there. But speaking of uh, being the only boy in an all-girl scout troop, maybe you want to start smoking some weed. <laughs> Just maybe. Because a new Harvard study suggests smoking weed is associated with a higher sperm count. <laughs> this posted on uh, February 6th by Adam Drury, Drury on High Times Magazine. Uh, website here, hightimes.com. Yeah, according to the new study published in Reproductive Health, people who had who who had ever smoked that doesn't even make sense. Who had ever smoked marijuana had higher sp sperm concentration and overall count than those who had never smoked weed. <laughs> That's right. If you're a testicle having person who smokes weed, you've probably heard that you're harming your reproductive health. You've probably heard that smoking weed lowers your sperm count or reduces the quality of the DNA integrity of your sperm. If you're not trying to have a kid, maybe that sounds just fine. But a new study by Harvard Medical Researchers published today, back then when this article was posted, in the journal Human Reproduction is challenging this oft-repeated conventional wisdom. According to researchers, Smoking weed may actually make a person's testicles more fertile, not less, more fertile. <laughs> Men who, <laughs> yeah, the idea of consuming marijuana lowers sperm count may not just be wrong, but the exact opposite of the truth. That's according to the new peer-reviewed, I, I know that's very important to some people, the peer-reviewing article. Marijuana smoking and the make, uh, uh, markers of testicular function among men from a fertility center. Uh, researchers say that smoking weed at all, ever, could increase not only your sperm count, but also the sperm concentration in semen. In short, smoking weed may make you a freaking stud. Oh, no. It may just increase your uh, male productivity, fertility and not reduce it as you've been told so long for so long. The conclusion flies in the face of what people have said and thought about cannabis and fertility for years. And no wonder. Newspapers and magazines and websites, even birthcontrol.com, have published articles on the negative impacts of marijuana on male fertility. And to be fair, most of those articles are based on scientific studies pseudo-scientific studies, agenda-driven scientific studies, yeah, uh, which suggest weed isn't doing anyone's sperm any favors. Uh, and Vinny calls them here the, uh, the testicle-inhibited front-hole sufferers. <laughs> oh, I don't have followers except on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I don't think I need to go through all this whole thing either, but uh, <laughs> I find it very interesting uh, just from the fact that, oh, it's just more lies from, from, from them in order to control you in the things that you do. Just more lies because they lie about everything and you know that. You know that the MSM, as they're conventionally called, or the CLAP is... They're known here at Real Liberty Media, yes, the corporate lame-ass propaganda, the clap. But I do like the, uh, the the photo of the dude sitting up there on top of the, 
Uh, they're letting out a bong hit. Yeah. Hey, you wasted good smoke there, man. You're supposed to hold that shit in. Don't you know? Oh, by the way. <laughs> and let me mention once again, if anybody's looking for any kind of uh, weed style stuff, you know, uh, uh, um, bongs or pipes or papers or all, all, all those wonderful things, uh, uh, we offer them uh, via reallibertymedia.com on a website called Grass City. And and there's a link that it'll, it'll pop up in the header banner there occasionally, but you can scroll down on the sidebar banner, the, the right sidebar banner, and click on the link, uh, grasscity.com, bongs, water pipes, glass pipes. And today, um, for whatever, what, what's the reason for today? I forget. The, oh, oh, let me just click the link and I'll tell you. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll give you that link as well. Um, it is, oh, it's Mardi Gras. That's why. <laughs> yeah, so if you, if you follow the link there, uh, it, you can go on there and get um, 20% off automatically uh, on their website for everything for today. But there's also uh, another discount code which you can apply uh, which you get another 10% off, and that is BEADS30. So it, when you go to your checkout, uh, after you've uh, picked out whatever kind of smoking paraphernalia you want, and you go to the checkout thing, um, and, and uh, if you order, I think it's 50 bucks, you get free shipping. But under that, you have to pay for shipping. Um, it's not that much, though. And, and then you, and there's a, underneath that, there's a box to put in a code, and just put that in there. Beads 30. Beads, Mardi Gras. Beads 30. So, uh, which will give you a total of 30% off. That's why the 30. So, just, just uh, something there to bear in mind, keep in mind. <laughs> For any of you out there that may enjoy um, partaking. <laughs> uh, well, some of y'all, I don't know how many of y'all, but some of y'all um, post stuff up to YouTube. And I don't, I do. That's right, Fat Tuesday's tomorrow. Mardi Gras tomorrow. Um, yes, thank you, Kate. <laughs> so, uh, some of y'all, like I said, post stuff up to YouTube. And when you do, and, and I haven't found a way around this. I have to do it. Every video I've got to go in and do this manually is to go in there because I use uh, what, what is called the create Creative Commons. What the hell's bumping at me? Something's bumping at me. I don't know what it was. I heard I heard a three little dings, and, and I don't know where they came from. Uh, all right, anyway. <laughs> Okay, uh, so when you post the video, your video up on YouTube, they automatically set, set it to a standard YouTube license. And I don't like that. I want people to take whatever video that I post up there or parts of the video and repost the whole thing, repost parts of it, uh, do whatever they want with it. I don't care. I don't like all that, that, that copyright BS. Uh, what I do like... <laughs> It's for people to be able to share the information that I share. And even if they take it and they're making fun of me, I don't give a frick. A frack. What was it they said on uh, Battlestar Galactica? Frack. 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 <laughs> anyway, so according to this article here posted up on blacklistednews.com, a scammer used YouTube's copyright system to ransom creators. And this actually came from Vice, Motherboard Vice, but uh, it was posted on, uh, like I said, Blacklisted News, February 7th. A scammer was found to be manually abusing YouTube's automated copyright system in an effort to hold YouTube channels users at ransom uh, by, by submitting multiple fake copyright flags on videos the scammer was able to bring at least two YouTube accounts to the brink of automatic deactivation under YouTube's three-strike policy, even getting past YouTube employees who double-checked the suspicious claim. We striked you. Our request is $150 PayPal or $75 Bitcoin, read one message received uh, by OB Raids, a small gaming channel with fewer than 8,000 subscribers. Once we receive our payment, we will cancel both strikes on your channel. 
That's what they're doing. That's because of the way YouTube is set up to let anybody place a strike against you. Place a copyright uh, claim against any video you post. That's the way it's set up. And so people want to scam you. It's really simple to do. Uh, the message sent by someone calling themselves a vengeful flame went on to threaten a third copyright strike if the victim did not comply. Pay up! Which would result in the victim's channel being automatically deleted. Vengeful Flame also sent similar warning to Kenzo, another small gaming channel, demanding $200 in Bitcoin or $300 via PayPal. Amounts that would double if they were ignored. According to YouTube, anti-abuse teams initially identified the requests as suspicious and asked for more information. Vengeful Flame complied with the company's request and YouTube wrongly took down the videos, YouTube told Motherboard. Now let me just say this before I go on. Why? Why, why, why should this uh, channel user have to answer these freaking false copyright claims waste his time and his energy and his frustration because YouTube is set up poorly for, for that type of thing. They should not have to. The other person, the one claiming that this is a copyright infringement, should have to prove that they own the copyright. That should be it. They should not. They, they, this, is, this is just a messed up, one of the messed up parts of YouTube. And don't get me wrong, I you know I hate YouTube, but I love YouTube because they got all the music's on the YouTube, uh, all the music that I, I, I you know. But there's a, a lot of things that they do uh, as far as uh, free speech, people's voices that they they drown out, they get rid of. Uh, I, even my videos that I post up there, if I if I if I hashtag a video with the words global warming or climate change. YouTube puts some propaganda crap underneath it, explaining to you, you ignorant users of YouTube that might hear me saying something negative about the global science consensus on global warming. <laughs> they want to inform you that what I say is wrong and only this little propaganda from Wikipedia is going to give you the truth. Uh, anyway, don't let me go off on there. Uh, be that, bearing all that in mind, I, I don't know that there's anything we can do. YouTube is this, you know, huge conglomerate and also part of Google. <laughs> so <laughs> take it for what it's worth. Oh, anyway, YouTube confirmed that motherboard, uh, with motherboard, that it has since reinstated the videos, removed the strikes, and terminated the accounts. And let me just tell you this about that. If they, you post a video today containing information important, relevant to today, and YouTube gets this strike or whatever reason they decide to pull your video down, and then maybe a couple weeks, a month later, they say, oh, okay, we checked it out, you're all right, we'll put the video back up. Well, that information is now freaking useless. It's all freaking useless. <laughs> so, <laughs> they you, they may put your video back up, but, you know, it just don't matter. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry. Go off on a thing like that. <laughs> <clears throat> I am here as you are here. Oh, the walrus. Yes, the walrus. <laughs> Kurt Nemo blog from February 3rd. Another day in the empire. John Bolton's plan to starve millions of Venezuelans into submission. It is true, Venezuela's economic problems are large, or in large part due to the country's socialist command economy. But this overlooks the role played by the good old US of A, the UN, and the EU. 
Over the last five years, the United States has imposed financial sanctions on Venezuela. It has cut it off from Western financial markets, and this resulted in oil production shortfalls. Venezuela is unable to raise capital to address deficiencies in the oil sector of its economy. This situation was exacerbated when the price of petroleum fell sharply around the world. Venezuela's debt instruments are banned by the U.S. Treasury, thus preventing it from acquiring loans to address its severe economic problems and feed its people. The pattern has become rote. Nations are that are not captive to neoliberalism suddenly find they have a terrorist problem. Terror, quote, terrorist problem. Got that? <laughs> if the nation in question is communist or quasi-communist, no terrorist false flags are required. The evil venality of Leninism and Stalinism are enough to gain consensus for economic warfare followed by physical invasion if the leader in question does not fall or acquiesce. Trump's national security advisor has tweeted in Spanish to the Venezuelan military high command, Now is the time to stand on the side of the Venezuelan people. It is your right and responsibility to defend the Constitution and democracy for Venezuela. That was John Bolton, in case you were wondering. The walrus. This is unprecedented. Bolton publicly announced a military coup, uh, usually with hundreds if not thousands of deaths. He deliberately showed off his notebook with scribbled invasion plans so there would be no question about the agenda. But that's not how the neocons operate. Lies, falsifications, grandiose claims, and invasions to forcibly install, quote, democracy, which is nothing of the sort. Bolton's de democracy do doublespeak in action is thinly disguised euphemism used to obscure the actual objective, the destruction of entire nations, cultures, and societies at the cost of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives. Untold millions of lives have been destroyed by this sort of democracy that Bolton is talking about. It was put into action when Bolton was a toddler. Let's get real. Bolton couldn't give a crap about the people of Venezuela. If he did, the U.S. would not be imposing harsh, harsh sanctions that are resulting in malnutrition and starvation. Bolton is using an age-old technique of starving and depriving people so they will overthrow the government. This tactic rarely, if ever, works, uh, leading this the author here, Kurt Nemo, to believe that it is inflicted out of pure sadism, leading to the exact opposite reaction. Ah, where, where was my spot? I lost my spot. How did I do that? I was just there. <laughs> oh. uh, the people know the, the rule of the elite in Venezuela results in endless poverty and large, a very large underclass of desperate people. This is the primary reason they voted for Hugo Chavez and his version of the Bolivarian Revolution. His Bolivarian missions uh, provided access to food, housing, health care, and education. Standard socialist nationalization took control away from the transnational corporations and banks eager to fin uh, financialize everything in sight. At this point, Trump's neocons and CFR wizards will strive to give the military uh, to give, to get the military to go against Maduro, their military, the Venezuelan military, uh, who is dedicated to not backing down. Trump may convince, bribe, threaten the generals to go over uh, the self-proclaimed president or the uh, NATO appointed, uh, the uh, Zionist appointed president, uh, uh, Juan Guaido, uh, but there's one very large obstacle in the National Bolivarian Militia and the so-called Peasant Militia, the latter responsible for protecting poor farmers from mercenary groups uh, organized to and financed by ranchers and wealthy landowners. That is to say the people supporting Guido, Guido, we'll just call him Guido. How about that? It's a little easier to say. Um, <laughs> 
he's a Guido for the Zionists. The peasant militia will assist the regular army uh, against any foreign aggressor, wrote Chavez, who was warned that the U.S. military could invade Venezuela in order to seize control of its vast oil reserves. They already stole its gold. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the peasant, peasant militias, which are active in rural areas, will complement uh, and primary, the primarily urban-based Bolivarian militias, uh, which are, were incorporated uh, to re, into the reform of armed forces law that came into force on October 22, 2009. In short, if, well, this should be a win probably rather than an if, but if the U.S. invades, it will not be a queen sweep like Bush and the elders invasion of Panama. It also won't be a cakewalk like Iraq, where the army was defeated in short order. It will be a guerrilla warfare in a rugged tropical environment, not a sprawling Iraqi desert where there's no place to hide. So, uh, yeah. Anybody standing behind the uh, invasion and destruction of Venezuela realizes what you're getting into. Um, uh, not, not to not at all in the fact that ethically it's just horribly wrong because it is horribly wrong. Um, but, but the fact that it's not going to be, uh, a, a, like he said, not, a, not going to be a cakewalk. If you, if you have children that are of military age and they get sent down there, um, that, that's bad news. That's bad news for you. That's bad news for everybody. So take that socialists. What? <laughs> I was just thinking of socialists because because of the next story. <laughs> oh, of course, Venezuela and the socialists too. And yeah, yeah. Anyway, socialism. Oh, what a wonderful idea that is. <laughs> Panera Breads pay what you want socialist program goes totally belly up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Panera Bread will be closing its last pay-what-you-can restaurant located in Boston on, uh, I guess they already closed on February 15th. Uh, th this move comes after the business non-profit restaurant concept became unviable. When was it viable? When, <laughs> when was a pay-what-you-want, pay-what-you-can restaurant ever going to be viable. <laughs> it's insanity. You can't run a business like that. Anyway, on Tuesday, Eater, which is a website, I guess, uh, reported that none of the restaurant's five locations was self-sustaining. Gee, I'm shocked. The program, Panera Cares, was initially created to serve food to low-income people nine years ago in 2010. The concept was a pay-what-you-want business model in which patrons vis visiting the restaurant could eat for a donation. In 2010, Ron Shayak, the company's founder and former CEO, said the program's aim was a test of humanity. Hmm. The program's aim was a test of humanity. The program failed horribly. What does that say about humanity? <laughs> would people pay for it? He asked during a TED Talk in St. Louis. Would people come in and value it? <laughs> wait, you mean, wait a minute. Wait, all, all the liberals weren't lined up to, to donate big bucks, big bucks to keep this place going so that so that the uh, others that couldn't afford to, to buy food would, would be able to go in there and get something? Mm, apparently not. Nope, 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 because here we are, less than a decade later, with no Panera Cares franchises running in the black. Uh, the outlet also reported that th through the project's nine-year run, many of the locations were mobbed by homeless people and students who ate without donating. Because of the mob, one location was forced to limit its homeless patrons to a few meals per week. <laughs> Yeah, what what I, I think what they should do is maybe come up with like a, a General Motors cares or Ford cares or whatever, 
uh, and, and open up a, a dealership where you could go in there and pay what you want for your car. <laughs> Or 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 a you know realist re, Remax cares where you can get a free house. I mean, well, a don't you you can make a donation. You pay what you want for the house. See how that goes. Or or maybe uh, Bank of America cares day where you can just go in and withdraw whatever however much money you want. Just take whatever kind of money you want out of the bank. That would be perfect. That would that would really work out well. <laughs> it's, it's the same ridiculous concept but i i'm kind of i'm, I'm kind of getting war, warming up to the the bank of america cares wells wells fargo cares <laughs> just let me go in. just 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 you can just go on up to the atm and just keep on pressing the cash out button with never out with never putting a card in there <laughs> I'm 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 liking it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, Rob, you are correct. Rich fuckers are greedy fuckers, red, blue, libtard, or conservatard. It matters not what political stripe that I'm personally being labeled with at this point in time <laughs> because I was dissing the liberals. <laughs> No, no, no. It would go the same if I if I found something uh, as ridiculous on 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 the conservative side, I guess. Um, <laughs> but but that whole idea of just everything for free kind of deal. <laughs> All right, here we go from the twenty first century wire dot com, posted on February seventh, twenty nineteen. By. Uh, uh, Wait, have I not talked about this? Well, I've talked about this. I just don't know that I shared this particular article. But here you are. Squeal like a guinea pig. What? 5G will be a huge global catastrophe. Activist warns of massive human guinea pig trial. You are the guinea pigs. And you got nothing to say about it because... Whether you like it or not, whether you have one of these phones or not, the signals are still going to be bouncing all around right near you and affecting you. And I, and I heard that Trump tweeted out some nonsense about really, really wanting 5G and 6G to both be implemented fast, globally, as soon as possible. <laughs> Oh, Chloe, do you want me to mention your name? I'm sorry. I didn't mention your name. I didn't know that you wanted to be mentioned. I, I'm glad to mention your name, Chloe. <laughs> and you can't request from Barman and a, and a PM. You have to do... Uh, you can to him, not a PM to me. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> sidetracked. Sidetracked. <laughs> All right. As word begins to spread about the corporate government collusion, which is called fascism, by the way, corporate government collusion, definition of fascism, um, in, in what appears to be an increasingly reckless rollout of the new military-grade 5G cellular technology, activists around the world are now beginning to elevate this issue to the level of a bona fide public health crisis. I feel your pain. Not surprisingly, uh, government officials and corporate sponsors are attempting to avoid that issue altogether. Yes, they are. Recently, residents in the London borough of Hackney pushed back against the government-sanctioned corporate rollout of 5G, citing very, very legitimate concerns about the documented health risks to humans from overexposure to 5G millimeter waves. Uh, MM wave is their uh, shortening, I guess, there. Uh, with a litany of potential health side effects, including damage to the eyes, skin, testes, as well as causing cancers, altering brain development, on and on. One resident, Liza Evans, who lives off the busy Old Street, I guess that's just the name, Old Street, okay, uh, raised the alarm that 5G could be, will be, the next big public health scandal in the same vein as asbestos, except for the fact that 
asbestos was brought to light and exposed. 5G is not going to be, at least not until 6G comes around uh, <laughs> and is ready to roll out. Uh, noting that the 5G firm EE never notified residents about their recent rollout experiment. The effects of this radiation, millimeter wave radiation, on the public health is yet, has yet to go undergo any rigorous scientific testing. I don't think it's even undergone just minimal scientific testing. They don't care about that. All they want to know is that they can send the signals out. They don't care what it does to you. The American Department of Defense uh, uses this technology for crowd dispersal and disruption. It's much stronger than 4G or 3G. Huh. Hmm. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Frumpy says I'm, 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 I'm wanting some more Christmas cookies already. <laughs> uh, well, oh, 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 I see why, Chloe. Okay, I saw that request in, in the list, but when you request via barman in PM, it does not include your name. It doesn't, your name's not in there. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you a channel later on. You can go in and request and it'll, so that it'll appear normal in the list. <laughs> All right. Anyway, enough about, I, like I said, I've, I've talked plenty about the 5G and the damages that it's going to cause and them not uh, being the, uh, not, not willing to talk about it and also uh, dismissing you should you talk about it. Um, and, and probably, you know, doing much further damage to people in the future, uh, just as they do to uh, anti-vaxxers now, um, or people that talk about the, uh, the, the hoax school shootings. Yeah, they're, they're going to come after you like that when you talk bad about 5G. Uh, just the same, and, and it's going to be horrible and disgusting. And uh, just yeah, There's a lot, a, lot, a lot of information in that article, though. And the article also links to a lot of other information. So I suggest you read that article. Uh, if you're not in the chat, don't worry. It'll be in the post-show blog, which will probably go up after the show this evening. Um, okay. One more story. I'll get to this really quick. Because it's so stupid. It's so stupid. But this is what they're doing. Over there in Arizona. Uh, it, it, apparently this came from uh, Zero Hedge, but it's posted on IntelliHub.com on February 11th. Uh, Arizona wants to declare porn a public health crisis. So if you look at some girl's, a picture of some girl's boobies on the interwebs, you are being infectious. You are causing a public health crisis. You may point out to somebody, hey, look at these boobies I just saw here on the internet. And they're going to say, whoa. That, that could infect me, and I may infect somebody else with it. <laughs> a, re a Republican state lawmaker in Arizona is disturbed about the proliferation of erotic images. You know, I, I think you missed the boat there, buddy, about 20-odd years ago. When, when maybe, I mean, if you were looking at, at porn back in the 90s, on the internet, maybe you might have said something at that point if it was going to disturb you. But where it is now, you're, you're out of luck, dude. Uh, anyway, so, and their toxic effect on human behavior. He has introduced a bill that would declare pornography a public health crisis. Uh, the bill, first introduced by State Representative Michelle Udall, uh, passed through the Arizona House and the Health and Human Services on Thursday, the first major obstacle in its path is a possible full vote. The bill has no legal ramifications, but states that porn perpetuates a sexually toxic environment. Oh, because they hate boobies. I don't know why they hate boobies. They must hate their lives, I think. I think that's what it comes down to. Anyway, uh, there is another uh, one that I've seen since then that say they want to tax the uh, make the ISPs tax you charge you a fee if you will uh, if you want to visit a, a internet porn website 
However, as it, I, as I pointed out, I think when I was talking about that story, psh, use a VPN. <laughs> With the use of a VPN, you can appear anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> they won't know, so uh, I think those guys have been out in the in the Arizona sun a little too long, baking their brains. Anyway, anyway, that's gonna wrap it up here uh, for the show. Um, I'll be back again next Monday night with a, with another edition here. I think this is twelve episode, episode twelve. Well, I'm gonna start numbering these, maybe, maybe, maybe not, whatever. Uh, but I'll be back same same time next week. Tomorrow you got. Uh, Flash, somebody, and possibly Vin E. along with him on their show, In a Perfect World, his, their, whatever. Wednesday and Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, our Grammy, Grammy's Rocket Chair, uh, right right here. Um, it's 1 p.m. Eastern, Friday, also is Vin E. with his show, A Ponder Gander. It's easily to listen to. Um, yeah, I know most girls porn way, way more than just boobies, but I'm just saying. If they're going to make it ridiculous, I can make it ridiculous. <laughs> then Friday night at 11 p.m. Eastern is myself and the aforementioned Mighty Moose Girl with our show, The Freaker's Ball. Uh, Saturday is, is Flash and Vinny at the dark table at noon Eastern. I am on at noon Eastern on Sunday with the blues and the trivia here in the chat. Come on in, play some trivia, listen to some blues, have a good old time. Yeah, or you could do one or either. one. One you don't have to do either, or both. One whatever. And then Hal Anthony on, on uh, Sunday afternoon, three p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific, behind the woodshed, opening up a big oh can of whoop ass. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Have a great week. Peace. <laughs>